Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a supernatural horror film, The Haunting of the Tower of London. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie is set during the 1400s in England, when the two princes went missing for weeks. The two soldiers are pulling a chest out of the river waters. The duke, the assistant, and a young priest arrive at the scene to check the chest. They open the chest, and to their surprise, it contains the dead bodies of the princes. The bodies are already rotting, as maggots are seen feasting on the remains. The assistant suspects someone murdered the two princes. It appears that one of the two princes is bound to be the next king, since the king is currently sick and dying. But because of their death, the dupe will take over their place to be the next king. The assistant seems to suspect him of being responsible for the death of two princes. Afterward, the assistant reports to the queen that the two princes are already dead. The queen appears to grieve after hearing the news. Later, the duke, the assistant, and the priest set a meeting for their next action. The duke will inform the king. The assistant will conduct the investigation, while the priest will prepare the proper burial for the two princes. The assistant suggests the two princes rarely leave the castle, so she suggests the perpetrator must be inside the castle. The duke then orders to interrogate the castle staff, and tells the torturer to prepare the torture chambers for the interrogation. The next day, a drunkard voluntarily confesses to being the murderer of the two princes, so the duke sentences him to death. After some time, the assistant visits the drunkard in his cell. She still believes that the killer is someone who lives inside the castle, and not the drunkard from outside the gates. She scares the drunkard that his execution will be slow and painful in the torture chamber. To spare his life, she tells him to confess the truth. The drunkard tells her somebody paid him to confess to being the killer. She then leaves a dagger to him, so he can kill himself and not be tortured. Meanwhile, a man named Henry has the psychic power to access the afterlife and talk to the dead. An old man wants to talk with his dead wife, so he seeks help from Henry. In response, Henry asks for the wife's possession, so he can talk with the wife. Henry begins the session, and in a few moments, he is in the realm of the dead. The ghost of the old man's wife appears to him. She tells him that she came there to meet him. She then removes her heart and puts it on the table to eat it. After that, she warns Henry never to come to the castle, because death awaits him there. He answers that he has no plans of visiting the castle. In response, she says he will be drawn to the castle, so he must resist the call. After that, Henry goes back to the world of the living, and tells the old man that his wife wants to bid farewell to him. Back in the castle, the priest sees the act of torture in the torture chamber. He walks up, and the assistant approaches him. She asks him about using the power of Henry to investigate the death of the two princes. She aims to let Henry talk to the two princes. But the priest is reluctant to agree with the idea, since it's considered to be witchcraft at that time. The priest says he cannot give his blessings, but her secrets will be safe. The assistant then leaves the castle to travel toward Henry's place. In the prison cell, the ghosts of the two princes haunt the drunkard. They keep whispering at the drunkard, prompting the drunkard to stab himself repeatedly in the neck. Back to Henry, he experiences a nightmare of being in the realm of the dead. In his nightmare, the ghost of his wife appears to him, telling him to be careful, as if danger is coming to him. Apparently, Henry's wife and son are already dead, and he somehow manages to communicate with them. He keeps walking in the house, and finds the ghosts of the two princes. The two point at the drunkard, allowing Henry to witness the drunkard's death. The drunkard keeps stabbing himself until he no longer breathes. Henry wakes up terrified, and the old man's daughter comes to his room. She tells him that he has a visitor. The assistant awaits Henry, and she tells him that she needs his help to resolve the murder of the two princes. She tells Henry to talk with them, but he decisively refuses her request. At this point, she threatens to imprison Henry for practicing witchcraft. This gives him no choice but to join her in going back to the castle. After that, she pays money to the old man's daughter for informing her about Henry. Morning comes, and the duke and the priest find the drunkard's dead body. The duke finds the dagger, which he knows belongs to the assistant. The priest offers a prayer to the dead body, while the duke visits the dying king. It turns out that the king does not trust him, since he is unfair. He tells the king about the news, but the king cannot do anything because of his sickness. The duke leaves the room and tells the soldier to lock the king inside. The duke also orders the soldier not to allow visitors to the queen. Meanwhile, the assistant confronts the duke inside his office. There, the assistant tells the duke that she knows he's lying. This puts the duke in a rage, causing him to stab the assistant again and again until she's dead. 
Then, he leaves her dagger beside her body, making it appear that she killed herself. After that, the Duke orders to put Henry in the torture chamber. He's forcing Henry to confess his business with the assistant. Henry says the assistant sought the help of a psychic man who can talk to the dead. However, Henry denies that he is the psychic man for fear that he will be executed for witchcraft. The Duke then orders to bring the old man's daughter who gave information to the assistant about Henry. It turns out the soldier killed the old man and dragged the girl into the torture chamber. The torturer threatens to cut the girl's tongue if she will not confess. This forces the girl to tell them that Henry is the psychic man who can talk to the dead. Henry still denies it and the Duke threatens to burn the girl alive. Out of pity for the daughter's fate, Henry finally confesses to having the ability to talk with the dead. The Duke orders the soldier to bring Henry to the dungeon, while he lets the torturer handle the girl. He also orders to ensure that the daughter will be dead by tomorrow. As Henry is being dragged by the soldier, he tells the priest that he talked to the priest's mentor before. This leaves the priest baffled about how Henry knows about his mentor. The next day, the priest heads to Henry to inform him about his sentence. Henry tells him that his mentor died of torture suffering, contrary to the priest's belief that his mentor died because of old age. Henry also tells the priest that the assistant is already dead, but he refuses to believe Henry since it is against his religious beliefs. He then calls Henry to be a heretic. The priest walks out of the dungeon and hears the news that the assistant is already dead. That night, the priest has a nightmare where his mentor is being tortured. He wakes up from the nightmare and walks to the hallways. He finds the queen having an affair with another man. The ghost of the assistant appears to him, saying that he must help all of the people in the castle. The following day, the priest attends the proper burial of the assistant. Then he brings food to Henry and says Henry is right all along. He says he can no longer stop the evil in the castle alone, so he agrees to seek help from Henry. But Henry seeks freedom in return for using his power. The priest convinces him that he will be free if they prove the Duke to be guilty of murdering the two princes. Henry then tells the priest to bring money to his mother living in the village. The priest brings the money to the village. There he speaks to Henry's mother. She informs the priest that Henry gained his ability to access the afterlife, out of desperation to talk with his dead wife and son. After that, the priest and a guard dig the grave of the two princes, in order to get some belongings of them. In this way, Henry will be able to talk to the two princes. At night, he is finally able to dig the graves. He then grabs a necklace from the dead bodies of the two princes. The guard gets mad at the priest for abandoning his belief by believing in Henry's power. However, the priest answers he has no choice, since he needs to stop the evil in the castle. Soon after, the duke finds out that the grave of the two princes has been excavated. So he orders the soldier to find who dug the grave. He also finds the guard's belongings on the scene. Later, the priest brings the necklace to Henry. In a few moments, Henry is able to travel to the realm of the afterlife. There, he is able to witness the death of the two princes. The two princes beg for help, as the killer slowly entered the room. It turns out that the queen is the killer all along. She uses an axe to chop the two princes to death. Afterward, Henry figures out that the queen conspires the plan with the duke in order to make the duke the next king. She also plans to have a child with the duke. Knowing the truth, Henry leaves the realm of the afterlife and informs the priest about the affair between the queen and the duke. After that, the priest runs to the king and reports the truth to the king. He tells the king that they need to banish the duke and the queen from the castle. He says their evil is the cause of the appearance of the ghosts in the castle. He adds that as long as evil resides in the castle, the ghost will continue haunting it. Out of nowhere, the duke enters the room. The priest tries to fight back against him using a knife, but he's too young, and the duke overpowers him easily, and the duke simply throws him away like an adult toy. Then, the duke comes to the helpless king and chokes him like a chicken. The king tries to fight back for his shitty life. In response, the duke repeatedly bashes his head until he dies. The soldier arrives in the room and arrests the priest for murdering the king. The duke orders the soldier to bring the priest to the torture chamber. There, he sees the torturer putting the same guard in the torture chamber. The duke forces the priest to confess to being the murderer of the two princes and the king. He threatens to torture the innocent priest, using a unique torture device. Out of fear, the guard confesses to all of the crimes in digging up the grave. The duke then disembowels the guard, and blood gushes out of his body. After that, the duke tortures the priest, leaving him screaming out of unimaginable pain. Then, the soldier brings the priest back to the dungeon. He can barely walk, and he's hopeless. 
He feels that he failed to stop the evil in the castle, and then tells Henry to let the dead take their vengeance against the evil duke. In response, Henry sets free the ghosts from the afterlife, so they can haunt the castle and take their vengeance. Just then, a demonic figure emerges in front of them. The priest surrenders his life to the demonic figure. Meanwhile, in the hallways, the ghosts taunt the evil duke. The ghost of the king appears in front of him, and the king keeps releasing an evil laugh. The castle shakes as the surroundings are filled with demonic forces. The duke keeps running, and everywhere he goes, the ghosts keep tracing and haunting him. He finds the ghosts of the two princes feasting on the assistant's flesh. After that, the ghost of the mentor appears in front of the duke. The mentor's ghost stabs the duke in the mouth, which rips out his teeth. This time, the duke prays for salvation. The evil duke finally sees his death as he dies out of suffocation. In the dungeon, Henry is trapped in the afterlife, but he still has access to the world of the living. In the end, he uses his power to visit his beloved son, while the ghostly forces continue to haunt the castle. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.